What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So today we're talking about a gas smell in the cabin of a C300 W205. So anywhere from 2015 to 2019, um, if you're experiencing gas in the cabin, I've got some tips and things for you to look for, and I'll tell you how much my repair costs. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so the gas smell in my car only occurred when I sat idle. So if I was uh, basically pulling up to a light um, and then taking off again, it would not smell. But if the car idled in a certain place for, um, I'd say anywhere, maybe up to five minutes, uh, you would start to get gas smell in the cabin. So uh, it was relatively strong, uh, enough to the point where I said, this is ridiculous, I need to take it into the dealer and get it looked at. So what I'm gonna show you are two places that um, you should look to see if you can diagnose it yourself so you can see exactly what's happening. It might be these two spots um, in your case, and um, it's something that you could do yourself. Um, if you don't have a lift, it's going to be difficult. I chose to just have the dealer mess with it since it was already in for an alignment, so I went ahead and had them take care of it. So uh, initially, I thought it was going to be covered under warranty, but belts, fuel lines, consumables like that are not covered under warranty. So if you're a certified pre-owned or the uh, factory warranty, this problem will not be covered under warranty. So uh, I'll show you guys right now where it occurred for me. All right, guys, so now we're looking at the top of the engine. I've taken the engine cover off and uh, the place I want to steer you towards is the high pressure fuel pump, which is underneath this shielding cover. If you really wanted to take this shielding cover off to look to see if you have any gas weeping here, um, you can. But there are two places to look. Uh, you have this braided hose over here. You see this braided hose come down? That is your low pressure fuel line coming into your fuel pump. And then you have this hard line out here to your fuel rail. So. Those are two places to look to make sure you don't have any gas running down uh, during idle and uh, to make sure that those are dry. Now, as with anything, you can, you can usually see when gas has started to weep and it will start to stain and look white. So just look around these areas. Um, this is a problem point, but I will show you the connector on the bottom side where I had my leak. Let's go underneath the car. Okay guys, this takes no uh, removal of any panels or anything like that underneath the car. So you want to scoot back up just behind the front panel that your, uh, that your oil change, your, your panel for your uh, transmission here, for your transmission uh, you know, fluid change, you don't need to take the panel off unless you can see some leakage here. So I'm going to try to get you here, get you some better light here. All right, so I'm going to attempt to zoom in on exactly what I'm talking about. This is your fuel line here coming from, from the fuel pump here in the tank. comes along the fuel rail, and then you have this little connector here, little rubber hose here. Now this is for vibration purposes. This separates the hard line up here on your engine from the chassis. So you have this, this line here. So these two connectors are where I had my leaking issue. So this is on the driver's side, um, just in front of where your feet would sit. So here is the test port. This little guy here is the test port. And you can see the, let's try to focus in better on it. Okay, you can see the little knob um, you can see the actually the little cover for the test port. So this connector that we're looking at right here is actually the issue where it was seeping fuel down on it. So it was basically seeping down this little rubber line and you could barely tell that it was actually leaking gas. So it takes very, very little 
to get that smell, but once you get that smell, you can see exactly why this was sucked right up into the cabin. This is in your engine bay, and your cabin air filter sucks air from your engine bay, and boom, right into your nostrils in the car. So it took very, very little fuel to make a smell in the engine bay. So I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them as much as as much as I can. But just for reference, this is right by the front left wheel and right up underneath the cover. This transmission to the right, fuel line to the left. I think you can understand from there. So let's talk about how much this cost me. All right, so it was easy uh, to kind of diagnose it. Um, I had no idea where I was looking initially, so I'm glad that I did a little investigation. I had the dealer show me exactly where it was. Um, now, am I glad that I had them do it? Yeah, I mean, I would have had to buy one of those crimp tools uh, to put those bands on uh, to make it legit. So, I mean, I'm glad that they went ahead and did it. Now, the dealer did take off $123. He kind of hooked me up. The service writer uh, was willing to take care of me. Uh, but let's go down exactly what this costs. So, in labor alone, $331.90. So they had to run the fuel line from the test port up to the engine, that braided hose that I showed you, they ran a new one up to my high pressure fuel pump. And then they replaced that, that uh, the what do you want to call it, that rubber hose on the bottom. So labor was a little in, uh, intensive. Um, I really didn't, I'm glad I didn't do it myself, but I could have, um, it would have just been a pain in the butt. Now the parts were only $84.10. So you have to figure out, is it worth it for you to get underneath the car and or fix it? Uh, you know, you're going to be into it pretty, you know, pretty extensively. Um, I don't know exactly how many hours of labor that is. It's not broke down on the sheet, but it, all in all, it would have cost me $415, but the dealer hooked it up and I came out of there with $292.60. So not too shabby. The fuel hose cost three, $31.60. Um, the other fuel hose is $32.50 and they charged me $10 uh, for two loom ties. So I mean, that's a little ridiculous, but it is what it is. If you want the dealer to fix it and they, uh, they do it um, like they should, it's gonna cost you some cash. So not too bad, but they replaced a the fuel hose from the main line to the test port and from the test port to the high pressure pump. So I hope you guys uh, got some information from this video. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, put them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. And I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video.